I'm going to walk you through a theory that I have about Jarvis and Vision in Avengers Infinity War. This is a spoiler alert. You've been warned. Hit the button if you have not seen Infinity War or you're looking forward to seeing other videos first. Let's go back to Age of Ultron, the second Avengers film where Dr. Banner and Tony Stark suddenly decide that Jarvis has been fighting against Ultron when Ultron attacked him and they decide to take the Jarvis protocol and put it back into the Infinity Stone to rewrite what they've done. And they're trying to get everything done and it's halfway done, partway done. Here we go, partway done. Suddenly Thor bursts in and he takes his lightning bolt and shocks everything. So you've got all these powers and all this stuff coming around from all over the place. And that's how Vision was born and Jarvis is inside of him. Well, we get into Avengers Infinity War and there's this dilemma where Vision and the Infinity Stone are too much, uh, you know, they're, they're combined together too much, you know, and it's, and it's like they're worried, like, what would happen if Thanos gets the Infinity Stone out of Vision's forehead? Would Vision survive? There's a lot more I could say about that. My point isn't to clarify that, but you get the idea that there was a dilemma. And because of that, in the laboratory, they're working on Vision trying to extrapolate the Infinity Stone from him. So there's all this processing, processing again going on against this Infinity Stone. Then we get, you know, Cyrillic accent, weird magic mist lady is running around and she attacks Vision's forehead to try to destroy this Infinity Stone like it's a good thing she's trying to do. Well, that's another time of many where this Infinity Stone in Vision's forehead has been attacked with these superpowers, just like Thor did with his energy bolt back in Age of Ultron. So there's all this stuff that's going on partially, again, back to the laboratory, partially working on severing the Infinity Stone from Vision's forehead. And we don't ever find out if that work in the laboratory was completed or not. Well, eventually Thanos does get the Infinity Stone and we're led to believe that Vision is basically dead. Now, I'm going to go back to an old writing technique. It's a method writers, authors understand this. It's called Chekhov's gun. And this is basically the theory in writing that it's good story writing. If you have a gun in scene one, shoot the gun in scene two. And we have that happening all over the place with Avengers. You've got, you know, this situation of Loki doing something in one movie and then a few movies later, somewhere else it shows up. You've got the Tesseract showing up in all these different films all over the place. When the Age of Ultron begins, Tony has this vision of the entire team dead, basically where Thanos sits. And Captain America says to him, you know, you could have done more. Why didn't you try to save us? And Thor is having the same types of visions, people asking him this question. And that's what actually led to Tony working with Dr. Banner to try to create vision. And that also led to Thor coming in with his lightning bolt to create vision. All of that has to serve a unified purpose that shows up later on. If they're having visions and, and motives and inner soul searching, whatever, to try to save everyone in an earlier Marvel movie, then later on, those efforts are going to lead to saving everyone, even if it's in a later film. This is Chekhov's gun, which happens so, so often throughout the MCU. So, creating vision must lead to saving the day at some point. Now, the gun that was shown in scene one and fired in scene two, of course, has not to be scene one or scene two, but in earlier scene, later scene, the gun that was created is the method of having all these things converge in order to create vision. You've got the same things happening again in the Infinity War with the, the partially done work in the laboratory with Vision and all these powers coming against Vision's Infinity Stone. Finally, 
Vision is just enough severed from his body, but just enough still joined to the Infinity Stone that Vision's AI downloaded into the Infinity Stone that Vision got out. Remember, he's a survivor, just like Jarvis was against Ultron. And when Thanos finally puts Vision onto his little gauntlet thingy, he's actually got the Vision AI on his gauntlet, just how Jarvis was fighting against Ultron earlier. That Jarvis, that same Jarvis AI is now part of the larger Vision AI. So I have this theory that eventually in the end, Jarvis is going to be running around inside the the gauntlet. So here you've got this this Vision Jarvis running around inside the gauntlet. And at some point that messes with stuff. Now, of course, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that calling Captain Marvel is going to bring some massive unification at the end of everything, because I mean, that's how these comics go. When the big guy in the sky is bad, everybody unites to fight against him. That happened with Goku and Mr. Satan in the Dragon Ball Z series, getting all the people on the earth to cooperate with Goku in order to defeat the big bad guy in the sky. Well, we've got the same thing. That's very different from the Christian worldview where people unite because they love each other and they like each other and they care about each other. Well, in in this other type of defeat the big bad guy in the sky sort of scenario, you've always got people who hate each other coming together because they hate someone else more. And that's what we're dealing with here. So you better believe Captain Marvel is not just going to bring her incredible, ridiculous superpowers to the table. She's going to bring that that unification of, of warring armies factor with her. And other people have said that, and I don't know much about it, but it makes sense to me from a story writer's perspective. So one way or another, it could be Vision, the AI running around inside the gauntlet that acts and somehow is one contributing factor to defeating Thanos. Of course, it doesn't take a rocket scientist either to know that Doctor Strange and that little time stone thing that he's probably going to pull the same trick yet again, which he did before. That's again, Chekhov's gun. So we're going to see some time stone stuff and Doctor Strange having his little thing. A lot of people have said that and suggested that, and that was obvious to me. But I think in all this, Vision has a role to play. Now, it could be that once Thanos is defeated, Thor comes along with his superpower now And he's able to put on the gauntlet and he puts on the gauntlet for the purpose of destroying the Infinity Stones themselves. So let's say that that happened. That that, that could be a scenario. Let's say that happens, but then all of a sudden he gets corrupted by the power or he can't control it. And that's when Vision's AI shows up inside the gauntlet and destroys everything. We don't know. I'm I'm not saying in particular whether it's going to happen this way or that way. I'm only saying one way or another... Before the end of this, I think Vision's AI is running around inside that gauntlet in the Infinity Stone that was in Vision's forehead. And it's going to show up one way or another, and it's going to be one factor of money that makes a difference before the end. That's my cute little tiny prediction, being a novice to all this, but knowing how stories are written. Tell me what you think. If I'm here, I'll respond. Don't always have time. Like, subscribe, and if it works out, I might make another video like this.